Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our pre-service meditation here at uh, the North Hollywood Church Religious Science Wednesday evening virtual service. So we're going to take these next 10 minutes to just get still and to come into the now moment, to just commune with that essence of life that expresses through each and every one of us. Just allowing ourselves to release any thoughts of what has happened up until now, any and just come into this now moment, focusing on our breath, breathing in, breathing out. It may help you with your in-breath to just silently say to yourself, I'm breathing in. And as you exhale, silently say to yourself, I'm breathing out. To keep your focus on the breath. And then when the mind wanders, which it does quite regularly, it likes to engage in thoughts or notice sounds, become aware of feelings, sensations. Just notice where your mind has gone. Activate that part of you that can just compassionately observe, see that it has gone off in a direction. Make note of where it went and then gently and compassionately bring your awareness back to the breath. I'm breathing in and I'm breathing out.
And so gently, let us bring our awareness back into our physical environment, feeling our feet on the floor, just maybe shaking a little bit, wiggling our toes, just re-anchoring ourselves in our bodies, coming back into our wherever we are physically located right, right here, right now. And so welcome to anyone who's joined us since we started the meditation out there in Facebook Live and Zoom land. We're so glad you can be with us this evening. Let's begin our Wednesday evening service with our opening chant led by our wonderful Margaret Owens. like Margaret can feel it? <laughs> I know I did. <laughs> uh, so, with all that love and that joy in this place, let's bring our awareness of that love and joy being ever-present within us as we turn our attention inward and join in prayer. So right here, right now, in this moment, I absolutely know that that one impulse of life, of love, of goodness in every way we can know it, feel it, experience it, express it, that is the impulse of God, that is the one impulse out of which all creation comes into being and that lives and expresses itself throughout all that is, is absolutely present right here, right now, as it is always. In me, in every person gathered here in the sanctuary, those who are with us virtually, and all beings everywhere. But knowing that God is present right here, right now, in this place, I speak my word for our service this evening, knowing that we get to experience God in so many ways as that vibration of connection that we can feel, as that vibration of love that has flowed through every person and continues to flow through all those who are of service here this evening, here in the sanctuary and remotely. I know we are absolutely moved and uplifted by the divine through our music this evening, through Sam and Margaret. And I open myself up to being that vessel through which the word that we all have come to hear, that truth that we all seek to know at some deeper level, including myself, is spoken. That each of us 
gets to remember the truth of that divine essence at the center of our being and to experience it more fully in our lives through this time together. And so I'm giving thanks right here, right now for all the blessings that we experience together and in gratitude, I release this word knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. And so please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Keep clear before me the moments of my high resolve when the dust and grit of the journey seem to keep me just a little too involved in the things I fear I'm missing and the questions I can't solve keep me pressing on the Unearthing these blocks of fear That for whatever reason they seem so big And all the pretty people that you place before me Wanna grab a shovel and help me dig Now I don't always wanna thank them Wish they'd find another gig Still I keep Pressing on, Lord, keep me pressing on. Keep clear before me all the moments when I've known the truth, when I knew I held your power within me and never had to ask for proof. Grant me the courage to the mark I need to try again Keep clear before me the moments of my high resolve gentle seeds of clarity that lie within me waiting to evolve and the fears born in the darkness in the daylight they dissolve keep me pressing on lord keep me pressing on
Beautiful. Thank you, Margaret. <laughs> okay, lots of <laughs> from the few of us here at the sanctuary. <laughs> well deserved. <laughs> so, good evening. And uh, tonight I wanted to look at this idea of taking the high road. And I wanted to check in to see well, does this phrase mean to others what? it means to me, I found a few definitions that were pretty much consistent with uh, the way I've always heard it and understood it. Uh, the Cambridge Dictionary uh, states that it's about um, to take the high road is to behave in a moral way when other people are not behaving morally. An example they give is taking the high road, Alvarez never fired back insults of his own. So we assume he was being insulted, but he never fired back insults. The Urban Dictionary uh, defines uh, the act of taking the high road is to choose the most noble, ethical, or diplomatic course or method, especially after or in the face of negativity or, negativity or ill treatment. Grammarist.com says to take the high road is an American phrase which means to approach an endeavor or problem in a fashion that is above pettiness, to travel the moral high ground, to behave decently. And so I think all of these reflect some sense of doing what's considered good, what's considered right, decent, ethical, constructive, even if it's challenging for us to do so. I loved that Psychology Today, in an article about taking the high road, it was actually about around children uh, as a parent, if they're misbehaving and how to deal with uh, some of the challenges that parents can run into. And they talk about taking the high road. The high road is love. The low road is fear. Take the high road as often as you can. And I thought, you know, in Science of Mind, we would really agree with that because we believe that our core nature is God's nature, which is love, right? We believe that God is present in everything and everyone, and that core nature is love, that we're created out of that nature of God's love, and it's forever seeking the expansive experience of itself through us. What gets in our way of experiencing and expressing that nature more fully is fear. There's always some version of fear that's preventing us from opening up to uh, more love, to expressing more love. It's out of our inability to recognize and sense God's innate goodness and wholeness within us. You know, all the ways that we feel separate from God, separate from good, which are false perceptions, but because we're created with free will, we can uh, perceive ourselves to be separate from God and therefore not express God's nature as much as we could. We can feel like we're separate from all creation when in fact we're not because we're all interconnected on the unseen side of life in the life of God. Well, that sense of separation gives rise to fear. All our negative thoughts and feelings that lead to negative experiences and conditions in the world, in our lives, are fear-based. There's some sense of separation that creates different, varying degrees of fear. 
So I doubt when we're being encouraged to take the high road, which is love, over the low road, which is fear, I doubt that there'd be anyone that would argue that we would love, about the idea that we would love to experience more love in our lives as opposed to fear. I don't think I'll be very surprised if a bunch of you started chatting on Facebook Live or on Zoom saying, no way. No, I, I'm all about experiencing fear and separation and negativity as much as possible. I think we all feel that impulse to experience something good all the time. And one of the key points I hope you will leave with from my message this evening is that taking the high road, coming from love, actually blesses us, that it gives us a better experience of life. You know, I think there's an innate sense that when we talk about, oh, just take the high road, high road, you know, do what's right, that we're doing this because there's some standard that we have to live up to, to look good in the other eyes of others, that that's what we're expected to do because that's just what you do as a good person. You might be totally miserable, but it's the right thing to do. And, you know, we're not here to just do things for others' pleasure. You know, God did not incarnate as each of us to just look good in others' eyes. You know, God's nature is to experience goodness, to express goodness through us. And if we follow that impulse, if we follow the pathway of love, ultimately what it leads to is us feeling good, us being happier, us being more fulfilled. And I think that's really important to recognize that because as we'll, as I'm gonna discuss here, it's not always easy to take the high road but if we realize that it blesses us to do so, then we're gonna be motivated to go that way. If we don't feel ultimately that there's some kind of payoff, some blessing to come out of this, our divine nature that's there to experience goodness, to feel good, is going to resist. So the first thing we want to remember is that this idea of taking the high road, the behaviors that are associated with taking the high road, actually give us a better experience of life. Because to take, to, the high, to take the high road, we actually have to get to the high road first, right? A lot of times we feel so far away from that high road and it can take some effort. It involves transcending our knee-jerk reactions to not engage in some behaviors that we might feel justified in engaging in, like lashing back or revenge when we've been hurt, complaining, gossiping, resenting, refusing to forgive. Those are all things that when we find ourselves in one of those patterns, it can be difficult to get out of that pattern. It can take work on our consciousness. And when we feel wronged by others or by life, and when we just feel life has dealt us a blow that is just so unfair, we can feel very justified in complaining, in soliciting agreement from others about you know, how wrong that person was. That would be gossip, by the way. Soliciting agreement sounds so much better. It's gossip. <laughs> Resenting, you know, hey, you know, I've, I, I have really uh, been dealt a, a difficult situation here. I, I have a right to resent it. Or that person really, really hurt me, and I have every right to hold back my forgiveness. You know, we can get into that pattern. I think it's that there's some perception that if we release our resentment, if we forgive, if we don't complain, on some level, we're saying that it's okay 
for others to treat us badly. It's okay for life to not go our way and for us to not be able to experience goodness in our lives. But really, the opposite is true. If we can remind ourselves of how freeing, how empowering, how, how liberating it is to not be pulled down by others' behaviors or by the circumstances of life, we'll feel a lot more motivated to do the work to get past those negative patterns. You know, when I was thinking about this, about the high road and getting to the high road, I remembered <clears throat> when I first moved to LA, uh, it was when I began uh, my studies at UCLA. And I'd visited a lot of LA on my own. I loved it. I had not yet been to Mulholland Drive. And I remember it was one evening. I was in the theater department. It was really late. We had had a really long and grueling rehearsal. I was so exhausted. At that time, I didn't have a car, but I had a friend with a car that was going to drive me back um, to my place where I was staying. But she said, have you ever been to <clears throat> Mulholland Drive or seen the view of LA up in that area? And I said, no, actually, I've never been there. And she said, well, there's this place. It's Blue Jay Way. Yes, after the Beatles' famous song. Um, she said, I know how to get there, and it's awesome. You can walk up there, and it's got this great view. Well, I was exhausted. But at the time, that idea of this amazing view was like, I think that would be worth it. Because if you know the song, that night there was no fog upon LA, and so we wouldn't lose our way. Um, so we went to Blue Jay Way. And I remember it was winding up all these streets in the Hollywood Hills. I thought, where on earth is she taking me? <clears throat> and we got to this area where it was like this very steep driveway that you had to walk up. I think that area has been roped off, but it basically led up to Mulholland Drive. And she said, we just need to walk up there. I was going, OK, remember, there's supposed to be this great view. And I purposely didn't turn around till we got to the top. I turned around, and as many of you know, LA on a clear night, you know, the, the view was spectacular. I'd never seen you know, a carpet of lights like that just extending so far. All my tiredness went away. It was just all replaced with this sense of awe and amazement and enthusiasm. And I dragged so many people there after that. When I had a car and I could take them up, uh, if I was showing people around LA. Well, you know, similar to that experience, I think doing the work to build our consciousness to take the high road of non-resentment, of forgiveness, it frees us from the negative feelings and it realigns us with love and wholeness. It opens us to that perspective, that view of so much greater good than what we experience when we're on the low road. Now, important to note that when I'm talking about taking the high road and not getting caught up in all the circumstances of the world and feeling resentful and all that, does not mean not addressing issues that we're facing. Not complaining doesn't mean not admitting to a hurt or a challenge. And it could involve discussing it, maybe with someone, someone who can offer a different perspective. You know, it could be that really good friend that could hear us out, but not from a place of join me in my misery and agree about how miserable things are for me, but rather, this is a challenge. This is something that I'm struggling with. And help me see things a different way. You know, we do that work with our practitioners. We do that spiritual work for ourselves when we're doing our prayers and affirmations. Forgiveness and non-resentment aren't about just accepting whatever behaviors or life circumstances may come our way, those that are not uh, kind or those that are not pleasant. 
Taking the high road, staying connected to love, is about remembering that God's nature in us is bigger than our hurts. It's bigger than our hurtful behaviors. It's even when we have not showed up at our best. God's nature in us is bigger than that. When we remember that, then we can move out of, you know, holding on to the hurt and move into a place of how do I rise above this? It can involve confronting others, you know, just because we're taking the high road in terms of others' behaviors. Forgiving and not resenting doesn't mean we don't address a negative behavior, an inappropriate behavior. It doesn't mean we don't set boundaries with people, but when we come from a place of this is an appropriate, and I know there's a potential in you that's bigger than the way you're behaving, that's a whole different energy than when we're saying, you hurt me, let me hurt you back. Completely different energy. We can stay connected with love, and we create the space to invite them in to do the same. They may choose not to, that's their choice, but we've pulled ourselves out of that energy of you know, feeling victimized by their behavior. We can look at negative conditions in our lives and in the world, and we can absolutely admit that there's room for improvement. You know, we don't, I've said this the last two weeks, the uh, uh, last two Wednesday services, that we don't deny that conditions in the world don't always reflect God's nature, but we look at it from a perspective of, but God's bigger than this. There's some aspect of God that's here to be revealed in this situation. Taking the high road, looking through the lenses of love, means to look at any negative behavior or circumstance with that idea of what greater good, what greater good is to be revealed here? versus feeling caught up and overwhelmed and you know, victimized by the situation which keeps us down in the low road. You know, Dr. Mark on Sunday offered us <clears throat> this mantra or this idea of uh, I am the race of the Christ, saying that for ourselves and saying that to others as this idea of breaking down these barriers to remember that we're all one of the same life of God. And um, when I heard that, it reminded me also of uh, a phrase that um, one of my spiritual mentors along the way had me work with for a while of, I am a beloved of the beloved. And to look at others and say, you are a beloved of the beloved. Another way to remember that presence of God that's bigger than whatever's going on in the world is God in me is greater than my hurts and my challenges. God in you is greater than your hurtful behaviors. God in us all and God in the world is greater than any worldly conditions. There's always some greater good to be revealed. All of this is to remind us of our oneness with a love that's greater than us being, our sense of being separate from one another, from good. It's greater than our perceived differences that hold us back from experiencing and expressing love. It's greater than any negativity. When we are willing to do the work to get to that high road and stay on the high road, from that place, we align ourselves with that love and we see from the high road perspective how to bring forth greater good into our lives and into the world. So please join me for a moment in turning your attention inward. And I invite you to bring into your awareness anything in your life or in the world that might be triggering any sense of resentment, hurt, fear, contempt. And 
and to the greatest degree that you can, call forth that vibration of love, God's love from within you that's bigger than the hurt, that's bigger than the fear, that's bigger than the resentment. And if that's difficult, just remind yourself, I know there's a part of me that's greater than my hurts, it's greater than my fears, it's greater than my resentments. Start there. <clears throat> remind yourself, I know there's a greater good to be revealed in this situation. <clears throat> there's a greater good in all that are involved in this situation, even those whose actions may be hurtful. God's nature in me, God's nature in all beings, in all situations, is greater than any negative effect or behavior. And it's there to be revealed. Imagine yourself being in a place of really knowing this, of feeling this. That you can see where there may be problems, but you also know there's a greater good and it's being revealed and showing you the way to move through the situation rather than acting from negativity. Just know that you're being moved to the high road to see the way to deal with all situations constructively, coming from love, and thereby allowing you and enabling you to experience greater love and fulfillment. And so I invite you to set your intention to release any sense of worldly conditions having power over you, holding you down. It all begins with an intention, just be willing. And follow that up by setting your intention to embrace a greater sense of God's goodness in you, in all beings, as greater than any worldly conditions and that there's always some greater aspect of God's nature to be called forth, to heal and reveal greater good. Just be willing to embrace that. And from this place, I invite you to join me in knowing the truth about some of the most common challenges faced by us as we move through our human experience. Remembering that God is always present, that the nature of God is always at the center of everything and everyone to be revealed, that it is the very life that animates the being of each and every one of us. Let us join together in knowing that that nature is eternal and it's unchangeable. That each of us has existed before we incarnated in this human expression and we continue to exist beyond this incarnation. That that life of spirit is birthless and deathless. And that as we move through the human experience, we continually experience change in the world. But as things shift, and for those who are feeling unsettled, who are feeling any pain or grief over something that has changed, something that feels like a loss, let us know that the vibration of God that they experienced that in this situation that has changed, in the loss of any being that has been in their lives, that the love is still there and it will continue to stay connected with those who are no longer with us, whether they're no longer with us here on this physical plane or beyond. 
it will continue to stay connected with all beings. And it is a vibration out of which when situations change that we weren't prepared for, that we can recreate the essence of that experience in some new way, whether it be a different job, a different relationship, just a different way of being, adjusting to the changes that we go through physically, all of it, there's some new way for us to experience God. And for those who are forgetting that, let us know the truth for them right now. Let us absolutely know for anyone that is experiencing any challenge with health, that God is a vibration of wholeness and well-being, that it is the very essence of health and vitality that moves through our physical, emotional, and spiritual body all the time. As we align with it, as we know its presence for all those who are not feeling that truth for themselves, we know there is a well-being that is being revealed in its perfect right form. We know it is that vibration towards health and wholeness that is revealing all the new cures, the new avenues for healing physically, as well as those ways to heal from within. Let us know for those who feel stifled in any way with their creative expression that there's that infinite giver in us that is always seeking to give of itself in a unique way. We all have something that is valuable to give. And as we know that for all beings everywhere, I know that those who are struggling with this are opened up to that perfect right channel, that perfect right way to give of themselves, to share of themselves, to be fulfilled, to be just reaping all the rewards that come of giving something that we love to give and to see it needed and valued. I absolutely know for those who are experiencing any sense of lack, as we join together knowing that God is infinite, there is no lack in God, we are part of an infinite source of good. And so let us join together in knowing that those who are experiencing a sense of lack, that that source is right there, ready to give of itself, to absolutely give abundantly so that any experience of lack is transformed into one of abundance, of feeling abundantly supplied and able to give back generously to life because that is God's nature. And let us join in remembering that the core nature of this one is love. And so where love isn't being expressed, where it's being withheld, let us know that there's a potential for it to be revealed and that it is the true nature of all of us. And as we know that, because we're all interconnected, for those who are not feeling that vibration, let us know that by us knowing it, something awakens in them and greater love flows forth. Let us know for ourselves that where we are feeling out of alignment with love, that that love within us is greater and comes forth so we can experience it in all our relationships, relationships, including our relationships with ourselves. And so knowing that that impulse for, of love is for greater good, let's also now just take a moment to set our intentions for greater good in silence. And whatever these intentions may be, whether they're for ourselves, loved ones, situations in the world, let us absolutely know that we're feeling the impulse of that infinite creativity, intelligence of the universe, that infinite lovingness of God for more of its nature to be revealed. And so as we know that God is in all these situations, good is revealed for that is God's way. And together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. 
And so we bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, we bless synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing that all paths lead us to the same God, the same truth. And so it's with a heart just filled with gratitude for knowing this truth that I release this word, knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. Together we say, Amen. <laughs> so this is a time in our service for our affirmative giving. So you should be seeing a link right now that's uh, showing you how to get to our website where you can make your donations online. If for any reason that's not working, the link is uh, nhcrs.org, that's our website, forward slash give. And that'll take you straight to the donation page where you can make your donations that way. Uh, certainly you can continue to mail in checks and uh, we'll also be available till about 8.20 this evening for about a half hour after the service uh, if you'd like to uh, call in your donations with a credit or a debit card. Um, we're happy to take them that way as well. And thank you right here, right now for your generosity and for your support. And so with that, let's join together in saying... From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you. So as we bring our service to a close, uh, let me just remind you that if you would like to have prayer with a practitioner after the service, that you 
can do so if you uh, are on Zoom or if you switch over to Zoom, if you're currently on Facebook Live, that we will have practitioners available uh, to pray with you for a little one minute miracle, It'll be privately in a breakout session. Uh, so please take advantage of that. Also know that you can submit your prayer requests to us either by sending an email to prayer at nhcrs.org or you can call the church number 818-762-7566. And if you select the option for ministry of prayer, uh, you can leave a message and um, the voicemail and the email uh, address I gave you are checked every night by a practitioner and those requests are sent out. So you're being supported by over 60 practitioners in consciousness. Um, also, if uh, you just would like to be uplifted with uh, prayer sometime during the week, you just want to hear a word of truth, you can call into the office and select dial a prayer where you'll hear a recorded message. It'll be an inspiring reading and then um, uh, followed by a prayer. So those are ways that we continue to be there to support you. Um, want to say thank you to everyone who was of service to us this evening. As always, thank you, Adam, back there, making sure we're seen, heard, uh, to our absolutely awesome, awesome musical support. Once again, Sam and Margaret, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, perfect, perfect choice, <laughs> as always. <laughs> um, thank you to uh, Alex and Blair, Doreen and Terry, who are either here in the sanctuary or in the office um, supporting us. And to those of you out there in Zoomland, um, I know that tonight we have Dean and we have uh, Melissa on Facebook Live. We have Brenda. Um, I don't know if Barbara and Mark are on tonight. I, even why they don't have to be on, I know there are Zoom people are always jumping in to help. Lynn Romanowski, all of you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being out there. Thank you to Liz Racy for holding vigil, for Jeannie Laporte, who is here to be on pulpit and is also holding the high watch for us, and all the other practitioners and all of you who have joined us this evening. Um, a few quick announcements. We uh, will have our service again next Wednesday, and my topic will be when wills collide. <laughs> we'll see where that goes. <laughs> we remind you to stay informed and up to date with us through our website, nhcrs.org. Uh, and you can use the website if you're not currently getting our weekly e blasts and monthly newsletters, uh, you can sign up on the website. And uh, you know, that way you'll be sure to stay current with what's going on here. Uh, that this coming Sunday, uh, our Love and Kindness Ministry will drop off food for the homeless. It'll be uh, June 21st, this coming Sunday. It's at Hope of the Valley Rescue Mission in Pacoima and also in the North Hollywood area. And if you're interested in finding out ways to help and support this ministry, you can contact Gilda Gomez at Love and kindness, all one word, love and kindness, 1919 at gmail.com. And that information is on our website as well. Also a reminder that we have Zoom Youth Church for ages five to 11, Saturdays at 10.30 a.m. Teen Church for ages 12 to 19 on Zoom, Sunday at 9.45 and Wednesday at 7.30. Men's group every Sunday at 11 to 11.30 a.m. Uh, our Zoom meditation is going strong. We love it. Just connecting Mondays through Saturdays at 8 a.m. It's a 15-minute meditation. Um, and let's see, is there anything else that, just a reminder again, that we're in the office if you uh, want to call and make a donation over the phone. And um, I think... That's almost, oh, uh, yes, we'll be doing a Zoom virtual patio as we've been uh, every week after this service. So if you just want to connect with your fellow congregants on the patio like we used to out there, 
just join us or stay on Zoom. And uh, I will also be there to meet and greet with um, those of you who want to just connect and say a few words. So I think it's time to move to that next level of high road. How's that? <laughs> Let's turn our attention inward one more time. So once again, I give thanks for that one life, that one presence, that one vibration of infinite love out of which everything is created and that lives in everything. I give thanks for all the ways that we've experienced it this evening, once again, through our sense of connection with each other, through that vibration of love for all who have participated in the service, through our music, through Margaret and Sam, through the prayers, through the words, through the silence. And I know that as we've explored this idea of taking the high road, we absolutely leave with a greater sense of the goodness that we experience when we move into that greater vibration of love and let go of those things that hold us back. And so I know that that continues to expand in our consciousness. It ripples out into the world. And so for all the blessings we've received and those that continue to multiply as we go about our lives, I just give thanks right here, right now. I give thanks for Sam playing the high road song <laughs> underneath his prayer. <laughs> in gratitude, I release this word knowing it is so. I let it be, and so it is. Together we say, Amen. Thank you again for being with us this evening. Let's join together one last time in song. Amen.